there you go. So how are you everyone? Thank you very much for being with us today. Our speakers of today are Steve Monsem and Tish Che, and you know, two great people doing amazing things around false prevention and of course, keeping us healthy. So why don't we start by introducing yourselves a little bit. So Tish, ladies first, why don't you tell okay. us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, well, I am a physical therapist. I have a doctorate degree in physical therapy. Um, and I have spent the majority of my 30-year career working in acute care. Um, I've certainly had some experience working in rehab and in nursing homes um, and home care. And I have to tell you the one thing that I have seen throughout my career is the, the crossover of incidents involving falls with older populations, regardless of the setting at home, in a facility, um, after um, an illness. Uh, so it certainly is something that's near and dear to my heart because I, I have seen how falls can truly affect not only an individual, but their family members and friends in the community that, that they reside in. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. I am the Director of Rehab Therapies here within Montfort Nyack Hospital. Um, and my staff is very devoted to working with people who experience falls. Um, and certainly mm -hmm. Steve and I have worked on our trauma committee. So thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. What about you, Steve? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Steve Monsam. I just started a new position as the trauma program manager in November. Uh, before that, I was an educator in the emergency room, and I've been working in the ER for about 10, 11 years. Uh, before that, I was a paramedic before I went to nursing school. So I've been working in, in the homes and in, in facilities and in hospitals. So I've seen falls in all different areas. Uh, but I really was surprised at how many falls we really see a year when I started the trauma program manager and I get to look at all the data. It's, it's amazing. We have a slides in a couple minutes to show you. It's, it's a large part of the injuries we have are, are from falls, which really surprised me. I know there's a lot, but not, not as many as we have. So if we can work on getting that number down. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I know that you prepared a beautiful slide presentation for us. So why don't we get us started? And again, to all of our participants, you know, please feel free to ask your questions using the chat box. And I guess, you know, we can ask the questions as you go, right? Absolutely. Is that okay with you guys? And, and, no, question, and then, no question is is too silly or too simple, please. That's why we're here. We want to talk about exactly. Calls. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And then still, you know, if you're a little shy to ask your questions during the presentation, we're going to have time at the end sure. anyway. So please. Go ahead. Next slide. Okay. Are you seeing the slides, Sandra? Okay. Okay. So just a quick outline of how Steve and I felt we would uh, best get our information to you so you could ask questions. Um, we're going to review some facts about falls, um, talk about risk factors that you as an individual can really look at and hopefully improve in your life so you can avoid falls as much as possible. We're gonna talk about what you can do for yourself to prevent falls, um, some exercise safety tips because that's near and dear to my heart, um, what you can do within your home to prevent falls and finish it up with a very quick um, safety checklist. Uh, there are a lot of versions of safety checklists online and I strongly encourage you if you do have accessibility to the internet to, to go out there and look and see. Um, there, there's a lot of information as far as making your home safer for yourself and your family um, that can help you with falls prevention. And as we mentioned, then questions and answers. Okay. okay. Next slide. Okay. Um, some facts, like I said, it's amazing when you start looking at, at the trauma, how much impact there really is from falls every year. So you see here, this is nationally, there are 2.5 million Americans are treated in emergency rooms after falling, which is a lot of, a lot of people in an emergency room. And one out of every three older persons fall each year, which um, that's you know 30 30 percent is a big mm -hmm. a big number when you're looking at that many people. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know is falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries for people over 65, and and even the, the ones that are fatal are obviously are horrible, but there are also a lot of non-fatal injuries that are life-changing, where you become incapacitated or not able to continue as you were before. 
Uh, we'll look at that number in a minute here. Interest inactivity is not a natural part of aging, so falls are not a natural occurrence. So we want everybody to be keep moving, keep doing what you want to do, but um, be a little more uh, aware of what you're doing and try to be a little a little safer. Absolutely, because uh, there are ways to prevent falls as we uh -huh. age. Because I'm aging and I know it's <laughs> a lot of things. I yeah, I think I'm afraid of falling more now than I ever was. So. Um, and the thing to consider, even, you know, everyone falls, regardless of your age. Um, that's why they call them accidents. You know, you trip on a curb, you, you slip on a step at home. And I think sometimes older people think, oh my gosh, it's because I'm getting older. And really it can be because you know what, you know, you were just having a bad day or there was a crack in the sidewalk or you missed that last step because you had a laundry basket or something on your mind and you didn't pay attention. So there's no stigma to falling really for people of any age. Um, it happens. Um, I think sometimes what we see with an older population though, with older patients, many who fall become fearful of falling. And what happens when we become fearful, maybe we curtail our activities, become less active and we become weaker with becoming weaker, then maybe we're more apt to fall. So it's almost like a pain cycle that we really, as part of falls prevention, I can't guarantee you that you're never going to fall after listening to Steve and I, but maybe we'll cut back some of that fear that you have after falling and, and you can then develop strategies to prevent falls as you go forward. Next slide. Good. Oops. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is a slide I made uh, um, looking at the trauma types that we actually see at uh, Montreal Nyack Hospital. And you can see uh, the, big, the big piece of the pie, 56% of the injuries that we see are caused by falls. Uh, there's a lot of different types of falls and we didn't break that all down, but uh, so probably the most common is probably trips and falls. Is probably so the these big. are people that just come into the ER Yeah, these visits. are people coming to the ER for visits. Wow. Uh, motor vehicle accidents are 17%, seems like you would think that would be higher, but um, that's only like a third of what the falls is. Wow. Um, and then assaults are the, only, are the only other big category we have, which is actually this year is a little different than other years. We've actually got an increase in, you know, assaults and violent crimes, even in the mm -hmm. NIAC area this year. And then all the other things are 25% of it is, is made up of just um, one or two, three cases of different things like animal bites, uh, bicycle accidents, uh, and a lot of strange things. Uh, somebody gets their finger cutting a saw or a snow, and it's a few snow blowers this year, but there's just one or two of the years that really isn't a percentage to put up there. But you can see though, the large chunk of it is, uh, is falls. And I looked this morning at uh, one of the things the trauma program manager, I've been entering a lot of data and I've been seeing a lot of um, patients going to the operating room for hips. So I want to look at what, what percentage of the patients that mm -hmm. came in with the falls actually ended up with a fractured fractured hip and it was actually 20% of the people that came in with a fall ended up with uh, going to surgery for hip fractures, which is obviously a, a life-changing event if you, mm -hmm. that's a major, major surgery to go through. So uh, I knew I was seeing a lot of them. I just wasn't sure what the percentage was. So I had to look that up this morning and figure it out because it's, it's very high. Now, a couple of questions about this slide, uh -huh. Steve. This is just for Montefiore yes. or is this like, oh, this is Montefiore Yeah, we get the statistics on the last slide were for, you know, nationally that there's 2.5 million people, but this is just for, um, mm -hmm. to give you an idea, we had, um, we enter all the cases into what they call a trauma registry and we had 916 yes. trauma cases, which is any kind of injury basically. And out of that 512 were falls. So that's, you know, that 56% is a pretty large number of people, mm -hmm. 512 people. Absolutely. And I imagine that the other 25 can refer to appendicitis or pancreatitis, you know, things of that nature, right? Like more disease related, mm -hmm. but, you know, being that more than half of the ER visits is under falls, that's pretty scary to the me. Is, yeah, a lot of falls. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. a day doesn't, I don't think a day goes by that somebody doesn't in for a, for a fall, either a trip and fall or, you know, um, obviously we just finished the snow season, thankfully. So uh, there was an increase during the, the ice and snow season. Yeah. You know, everybody has to get out in the ice and that's, that's dangerous, dangerous area right now. So uh, I'm glad everything's clearing up. It's beautiful today. So, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of people. And like I said, it's, so that's 20, that was 20% that were just the hip surgeries. A lot of other you know, major injuries that happen too, you know, even a bad ankle fracture or, um, you know, a show falling on your shoulder. A lot of things can also, 
you know, mm -hmm. affect you and change your life because, you know, you have to relearn a lot of. It's true. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's something to something to know, <laughs> be aware of, right? So, okay, we're talking about falls and how many we see here, but let's take a really close look at what are our risk factors when they come when it comes to falling. Um, some I think are a little bit more uh, self-explanatory than others. Weakness, you know, anyone of any age, if you have weakness, uh, muscle soreness, um, issues such as arthritis that lead to weakness, um, that's predisposing you for a fall. Um, difficulty with balance or walking for any of a number of reasons can certainly is, is certainly a huge fall risk factor. Use of some medications. And if you take nothing else away from this, I think Steve and I would definitely encourage you to really take the time to talk to your healthcare provider if you're on medications that you think might be a fall risk for you. Um, sedatives, I, again, I think that's something we immediately think of as far as maybe making us a little loopy and therefore being at risk for falls. Um, some antidepressants, some blood pressure medications, various painkillers, sleep aids. I mean, I'm just naming a few of them. Um, and then we deal with medication intera interactions. If you're on more than one or two medications, each one individually may be okay, but when they're combined, it may predispose you for a fall. And I'm not saying you should ever stop a medication without speaking to your healthcare prof provider, but it definitely is worth the, the time to sit down and talk to um, a physician or a nurse in your physician's office um, to really get an idea of what are some of the side effects of the medications you're on and will it predispose you to possibly falling and what are the alternatives to using those medications if there are any. Yeah, some you don't even think about and like the Absolutely. diuretics is a big one too that mm -hmm. if you're starting on a diuretic you don't realize you're gonna be getting up to go to the bathroom a lot more in the middle of the night and sometimes yes. in a hurry. So <laughs> yes, things to plan. Yeah. Um, another thing we see a lot as far as fall risk, problems with vision. Um, you know, as we all age, we develop issues with being able to see in lower light situations, being able to distinguish um, shapes and, and um, shapes and discriminating between different surfaces, again, especially with low light. Um, a lot of us, as we age, we require the need not only for distance glasses, but for reading glasses. And I know the first thing I know my ophthalmologist had recommended was getting bifocals or progressive lenses, which are absolutely great, but there's a, a break-in period with them. Um, anyone who utilizes them, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're looking up and you look down quickly, you know, it's a change and you, you actually do feel, I won't say a dizziness, but you notice a change in your vision when you use the, the transition from the top of a lens to the bottom until you get used to it. Um, so that can certainly predispose you for falls in that period. Um, so again, you want to be aware of that and utilize a break-in period um, and making sure you're safe when you're utilizing any type of um, vision aid um, and having your eyes checked regularly to know if, if you're developing an issue with vision so they can comp help you compensate for it and then you won't be as high a risk for falls. Um, a pet peeve of mine, improper footwear. Um, as we age, we really need to be aware of changes within our feet. Um, and we need to be aware of the footwear that we're wearing and is it as safe as possible to prevent falls. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on in the presentation. And then finally, um, huge fall risk. Are there any hazards within your home or community that can be changed, that can be adjusted um, to create less of a hazard, not only for you, but for your family, your friends, members in your community. Um, something as simple as an uneven step or a cracked sidewalk um, can really predispose you to a fall. And that truly is a risk factor um, that may not be under your control unless you bring it to someone's attention to have it fixed. Um, and we'll talk a lot about that as we go on in the presentation. <laughs> and again, feel free to interrupt with any questions or Sandra, if you want to clarify anything, please jump in. Um, so we've talked about what are our falls risks, what are our falls risk factors, I should say. Um, and really the reason I'm sure you're all here today, not for us to scare you with statistics about 
likelihood of falling and ending up here in the hospital, but what can you do for yourself or what can you do for your family member, um, someone you live with or a friend that you have, um, what can you do to prevent falls going forward? Um, and as I mentioned, and I know you'll be sick of hearing me say this, sensible shoes. Um, first and foremost, you need to make sure that you are on, you know, you have your feet in sturdy shoes that are non-skid, um, that you feel comfortable walking in or moving around in, that you're not kind of flip-flopping out of them. I'm not a big fan of flip-flops. <laughs> um, and that you're paying as much attention to your indoor shoes as your outdoor shoes. Um, I, I use this example. I had a patient once in home care had, you know, we talked and talked and talked about getting really good sneakers. And he did, he went out and he bought New Balance sneakers. They were the right fit. They were great for him. But indoors, you know, he would put on his, his scuff slippers um, to walk around and to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And he ended up taking a fall in those. And that really impressed upon me the need to not only talk about what are your regular shoes, but what are your indoor shoes? And what are you putting on when you're walking around your home, um, walking around outside of your home to really make sure that you're in the best, you know, least likely to fall shoes that you can find. Um, what else can you do for yourself? You can, as we mentioned, you can talk to your healthcare professionals about your concerns, your medications, and to assist with problem solving. Um, talking to a doctor, a pharmacist, if you're involved with a physical therapist or a home care nurse, taking the time to really discuss your concerns about falls and getting their input. Uh, we talked about your eye doctor. You know, anyone that you need, now is not the time to be shy. You wanna to talk to anyone at your disposal to really make yourself and your home safer um, and what you can do to really prevent falls. Um, use of an assistive device, a cane or a walker. Um, if a, a doctor or a therapist has been recommending to you that maybe it's time to start using a walker or a cane to be safer, um, I can't encourage you enough to really take that advice. You're not suddenly going to appear older or you know, more disabled. It's really going to allow you to do the things that you wanna do in your life um, as safely as possible. Um, I would much rather see you out walking with your walker on a beautiful day than staying home because you know if you go out without something, you're gonna be at risk for falling. And then finally, exercising regularly or starting an exercise program with a focus on improving not only your strength, but your balance, your flexibility, and your overall endurance, because really those are the four factors that, that are going to really keep you in the best shape possible and to prevent falls as much as possible within the home and in the community. Um, if you're new to starting an exercise program, any age, there's no, there's no cut, cut off for wanting to start exercising. Um, I would just say, you know, you need to speak to your healthcare professional um, and you need, or your physical therapist um, or a personal trainer if you're involved with one and really talk about what are your goals and how can you safely begin an exercise program and then progress it so you're able to do what you need to do and do it safely. Yes. Tish, talk to us a little bit more about shoes. Like people are asking and you know, me personally, it's like I go to the Nike store and they have like so many yes. types of sneakers. And I, of course one per sport, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like the soles are different, the shapes are different. So what would be the best shoes? I'm a high heels kind of girl. So <laughs> yes. I know I everybody's like, you don't fall on those. And I agree as I am older, I'm starting to shrink uh -huh. on the size of my heels. <laughs> But you know, what is really convenient? Because I mean, if you're a stylist, you want to look good. You don't want to be on a sneakers all the time. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, I agree. It's like, especially when there is ice outside Absolutely. and I'm on my heels. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what am I doing? Absolutely. You know, so please talk more about shoes. What do we need to do? <laughs> um, you know, again, and, and I use this from personal experience. I know a lot of people do, um, uh, visit a foot doctor, a podiatrist. And really I was amazed because I ended up, I, I had to visit a podiatrist um, a couple of years ago. I was having some issues with plantar fasciitis. 
And mm. I was amazed at the amount of information that he was able to give me as far as to go into a shoe store and say, you know, you need this kind of shoe with this kind of support when looking for a sneaker. And there's, it's true, there's a whole vocabulary that I was not oh. even familiar with other than saying, you know, my feet are kind of flat, what do I need? Um, so I think, and, and a lot of, a lot of the sneaker stores or uh, sneakers, a lot of the, um, specialty running, running stores or athletic shoe stores, they have salespeople that can really talk you through what kind of shoe you need. Um, and again, if you're involved with a podiatrist, I think that's another route to kind of talk to them about what's the best shoe. Um, and certainly, especially for older people, we know the shoes we're comfortable in. Um, you know, if I were to put on a pair of Sandra's high heels, I'd be flat out in the <laughs> ER within a, within a day. Me too. That would make a day. Um, but, you know, if you know you need arch support, really focusing on, you know, the fact that you need arch support. If you know you need a, a wider shoe, you know, focusing on getting that shoe that's comfortable for you when you're doing activity. Uh, the time of day that you go and buy shoes is very important too. Going and buying a pair of shoes at nine in the morning, by four o'clock in the afternoon, those same shoes may not fit you as well because our, our feet tend to kind of expand as the day goes on, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure maybe you're trying on shoes at different times. Um, I think they recommend more towards the end of the day or the more towards the mid to at, late afternoon is a good time to, to try on shoes because you have a better sense of what your foot is looking like. Um, anyone who may have issues with diabetes or diabetic um, skin issues, you have to be so careful with the shoes that you that you buy um, and really do it, taking the time to look at your feet at points during the day if you have some sensory issues, because we want to make sure with a new pair of shoes that you're not you know, developing um, areas of abrasion or, or rubbing or redness that maybe you're not feeling because of the diabetes. Um, so it's a whole, you know, we could probably do a whole other lecture on just shoes alone. Um, I would love that. Again, I would say. Sandra model for us. <laughs> <laughs> but I think really, you know, taking the time to know what's comfortable for you, making sure that it's non-skid. Um, and certainly it has to look good too, because if it doesn't look good, none of us are going to wear it, right? Yeah. Um, and and but, Tish, yeah. are there shoes for weak ankles? Uh, Perna is one of our attendees. She's asking that. Are there shoes for weak ankles? Shoes for weak ankles. Um, I would say if you have weak ankles, you definitely want to have that support that you'd get from um, either uh, some type of lace-up shoe, an athletic shoe, um, or a slip-in shoe that offers a lot of support. Um, because again, if you're putting yourself on any kind of a heel um, I think the, the block heels for women are a little bit steadier than the narrower heels that you may have mm -hmm. or a wedge heel. But when you're talking about um, unstable ankles, um, maybe that's someone who's already had a couple of sprained ankles. I think once you sprain an ankle, you always are kind of predisposed to having weakness in that area. Um, again, you have to be very careful as far as making sure you have the support that you need. Um, the arch support and, you know, you don't want to lace up over your ankle. I'm not telling you to go into a boot, but to really, if you have the support from the, from the sole of the foot and it's on your foot securely, it's going to lend itself to giving you ankle support. So hopefully that answers. Any other yes, questions? I think so. Now, um, yes. And as far as another uh, participant, he's asking if the same thing applies to canes and walkers, which I never thought of. Like, do you have to mm -hmm. measure your cane and walker? Mm -hmm. Like, my, oh, really? I'm sorry, say that again. What measure you your cane and walker. Yeah, they have to oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and how many of us, you know, I, I have to laugh, and this is like one of my hobbies, when <laughs> an occupational pitfall, you know, if I'm sitting in an airport, I love to watch people walk by and kind of see how they're walking and, and maybe um, what issues they might have. But, you know, how many of us have seen, you know, someone carrying their cane like it's Moses and his staff um, that's very, very high? And, well, it was my husband's and he passed away and now I use his cane but your husband was six foot three and you're five foot two. Um, but yes, canes and walkers do need to be measured appropriately. It's usually right about at hip level or a little bit lower um, where we want our hands to fall. So um, a 
a cane or a walker, we want our elbow to naturally be at a 25 to 30 degree angle. Um, but I would say if, if you've been recommended to use one, you should probably have it measured appropriately, either at you know, your physician's office or um, you know, whoever you're getting it from to make sure that it's the right height. Great, thank you. Next slide. A lot of great questions. Thank you. No. Nope, we were there. Backwards. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so exercise safety tips. And, you know, one of the things, again, as the physical therapist in the crowd here, um, I, I probably am. am stressing this a lot. And uh, I won't apologize, but certainly I have a bent when it comes to this. Um, exercise is, you know, a medication. Really, when you think in the true sense of the word, if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, this is what's the matter with you. I'm going to give you, you know, XYZ medicine to make you feel better. You're going to do that. Um, or hopefully you will, because we want you to get better. Exercise is the same thing. Um, you know, as a physical therapist, um, we really want to help you be the best you that you can be. And the same way that a medication will help you improve, um, having a good exercise program or a good activity program, um, it's going to help you be the best that you can be as far as utilizing your muscles, utilizing your joints, and really being able to do the things that you want to do um, without fear of falling. Um, a lot of times I'll have patients tell me, you know, I, I'm 85, you want me to exercise now? Like I'm done. Um, and very seriously, like, no, I want to go play with my grandchildren. I don't want to go to the gym to exercise. And that's fine. No one's telling you that you have to go and you know, bench press and, and go to a gym and, you know, start running around a track. But let's talk about exercise as being something that's going, something you like doing, or at least something that you can tolerate doing to make yourself stronger, to make yourself steadier, and to keep you in good shape as you age. Um, all of that ties in with falls prevention, because if you can keep yourself flexible, if you can keep your muscles in good shape, if you can maintain your balance, um, all of this plays into the ability to not fall um, and to really prevent falls from occurring. Um, so some exercise safety tips as you do take that step into exercising, and it can be something as simple as, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to walk a little bit every day. And, you know, I'll do a five minute walk today. I'll do a 10 minute walk tomorrow. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge change, but any change can really help us out. Um, before starting an exercise program, we do recommend you consult your physician just to make sure that you're doing the right things and you're doing them correctly. Um, anytime we're involved in activity, you want to stay hydrated. If there are any safety equipment involved, you need to use them. Bike helmets. Um, if you're bowling, making sure you have the right shoes on. Um, if you're walking, making sure you have the right walking shoes on. Um, not to hold your breath during any exercise program. And that's something I think we tend to do without even thinking about it. If you're so concentrated on what you're doing um, and doing it correctly, our reflex is to hold our breath. Um, so do, making sure you're breathing while you're exercising. Um, and then to consider joining a group or exercising with a friend or family member. Um, taking a walk every afternoon with, with a, a family member might be a nice way of starting some more activity than you had done previously. I have a quick question for you. Sure. What about walking or doing exercise barefoot? I mean, as a certified diabetes educator that I am, you know, bare feet. Is bare feet, yeah. Oh like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, because we don't recommend that. But you know, like lots of people just love to be bare feet. You know, so yes. is, is that something that is going to help prevent a fall? You know, I think everyone everyone is so different. Um, so I can't possibly you know sit here and say you should never be barefoot and doing an activity. I think being aware if you're if you're going to be barefoot, um, I know you know part, participants in yoga um, often are barefoot, and they say they you know that's something they like to do or some exercise classes. Be aware of your surroundings. I mean, you can speak to it with as a diabetes educator so much more than I can. Um, 
if you are not fully aware of what's on a surface that you're standing on or what you could possibly step on, um, I so don't wear think- wear shoes with goat yoga then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you have to be very careful. Um, and certainly any kind of an impact um, activity, um, running, um, any type mm. of aerobic activity that might involve, involve putting more, more pressure through your feet intermittently, for something like that, especially as we're aging, I think you do need to have um, some kind of supportive shoe on, um, in addition to the concerns in, in reference to skin integrity and any issues that may occur with diabetes. Did that answer your question? I'm sorry. I know, I know yes, some people yes. love being barefoot, so I, you know, <laughs> yeah, half the crowd. Yeah, like them. I know, I know people with diabetes should never be uh, walking without shoes, but uh -huh. I was wondering, because also, you know, I, I'm also scared, like if I'm walking on socks, for example, that I'm going to slide Absolutely. or something, you know, so that's another thing. And that goes back to what I was saying about indoor shoes. Um, I think a lot of us like walking around barefoot or in socks at home, mm -hmm. um, but it really probably is not a best practice. Um, having on some kind of non-skid um, shoe, non-skid sole on the shoe uh, is really probably the best practice as far as making sure you have something on your feet. Um, and how many of us get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and you're concerned with getting to the bathroom um, and then getting back to sleep? Um, you want to make sure those shoes are available to you so you can make it to the bathroom safely um, as much as possible. You want to talk a little bit? <laughs> Poor Steve. <laughs> okay, good stuff here. Yeah, in, inside the home, there's some things you can do. Um, some are pretty easy, some probably a little more involved, but a lot of easy things you could do to, to make it a little safer inside your house. Uh, hopefully everybody has the um, railings on their stairs is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, most stairs do have rails, but you know, sometimes people have two or three stairs and they don't have a railing or I know when we moved into the place we're at now, the front porch, there were no no railings going up inside the house. And that's mm -hmm. really a hazard in the winter, especially I have nothing to grab onto. And also, you know, I think in a lot of houses, the rail stops before the stairs do. Yeah. yeah. Especially at the time when I did home care, you like, we'd have work on going up and down stairs and you'd be right at that last step and the railing would be ending. Um, so sometimes it, it really is a, a good recommendation or something to look at do you need to extend a rail so someone has that extra safe is safety rail to hold on to to fully get up the stairs with both feet? Yeah, true. Um, my favorite, the throw rugs. That's that's always um, throw rugs. They definitely need to be secured. They definitely a definitely a fall hazard for a lot of reasons. One, they slide and you're going to lose your balance and fall. Uh, if you have any kind of assistive device, if you have a cane or a walker mm -hmm. in the house. The throw rugs get caught up in there. That's going to be a problem. Um, so you want to want to keep an eye on your throw rugs. You can can get the the uh, non skid throw rugs are a little better. Uh, there's a lot of pretty rugs out there, but they're not all the <laughs> same. Okay. Um, like Trisha earlier, you want to have good lighting wherever you are. So add add lighting in the rooms and in the hallways, uh, especially in the hallways where you're probably going from one surface to another. Mm -hmm. uh, declutter the house. I got to work on that. Too. Uh, but yeah, you want to. You don't want to have things that are going to be in your way that you're going to trip over. So you know, if it doesn't need to be out, it shouldn't be out, right? We like the kids. Get everything back into the toy box when you're done playing with it. Uh, evaluate how sturdy your furniture is. If you have something you've had for a long time, might be getting worn. Just make sure uh, you don't want to, don't want your chair to collapse underneath you when you're getting up. Right. Uh, and if, you're, you're, if down. you're leaning on a, you know, leaning on a table or on a piece of furniture, make sure it can really hold your weight. If you're really depending on that to help you stand up or you know, to kind of negotiate your way through a certain area. Yeah. Uh, if you do have things stored that you use often, probably move those to the lower shelves. Probably not the real lower shelves, probably middle shelves, right? Mm -hmm. If you have lower shelves, keep stuff off of that too. You don't want to be bending over um, too far. Okay. Um, hire help if you're able to. Uh, I know everybody wants to continue doing, especially snow removal. We see a lot of people getting um, injured, moving slow, nice. slipping on the, uh, slipping on the ice. You don't need to go out in a blizzard and clear your sidewalk. I know everybody wants to be conscientious and keep keep things clear for everybody, but uh, you know if you can hire somebody to do that, or if not, just wait until it's a little 
<laughs> a little clearer outside. Mm -hmm. Don't go out at night and start shoveling. It's kind of a little, again, lighting issue. You can't see what's really going on. Same with leaf removal. People don't think about how slippery leaves are, but if you've ever been driving up a hill around around town when there's uh, some leaves and it's a little wet on the streets, it's worse than driving yeah, on ice. Absolutely. Yeah. And walking pets in bad weather or walking pets in general, uh, I know everybody's pets are well behaved, but uh, we do see quite a few people that are are pulled over by their dog because <laughs> dog sees a squirrel takes off and you don't you know have a good grip or you don't uh, you got strong dogs even little dogs are pretty yeah. pretty strong and it doesn't take much to get you off balance when you're being pulled in a different direction than you're planning on going so or if you have more, multiple multiple pets is another and get tangled up and mm -hmm. be, be careful okay. uh, have a call system in place in case you do fall uh, we we're talking about that earlier most people do have cell phones now you know you want to have your cell phone with you if you have one, so you can make a call if you need to. Um, if you don't have a call uh, or a cell phone, um, there are systems out there that, you know, or the Lifeline or some of those things that uh, can call for help, but cell phone works probably just as well and you can yeah. actually talk to somebody and call who you want. I, I think a lot, of, a lot of people now have um, Alexa in their yeah. house um, and something as simple as, you know, Alexa, please call you know, a number that you have programmed in, or I don't know if Alexa will call 911, but, you know, just thinking of what do we currently have that we can utilize in order to be safe? Um, you know, making sure, as Steve said, if, if you have a cell phone, it's not going to really do you any, any good if you fall and it's three rooms away. So if that's going to be what you have at home with you in case you fall, making sure you have it with you um, in a pocket or having, you know, the help I fall and button. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I, I have to tell you what you don't want to have happen is to take a fall in your home. If you're home by yourself and then have to wait for someone to come and find you um, or hope that someone hears you yelling for help. Um, and that's something that <clears throat> we certainly have seen a few times. Yeah. So anything you can think of in advance to prevent a fall or to be able to do after falling to help you get help as quickly as possible is really the best thing. And then practice energy conservation and work simplification. <laughs> it's always Excuse best me. to work, work easier, not harder. So mm -hmm. plan ahead, make it easy as, as easy right. as you can. Yeah, knowing again, as Steve had mentioned, making sure that anything you're going to need is on a lower shelf, mm -hmm. um, but really planning your day, you know, if you know that going up and down the stairs four or five times in a day um, is your norm, um, but maybe that sixth time will push you over the edge with carrying laundry or whatever you're doing up and down, you know, stop and plan your day um, because maybe you'll be more apt to, to lose your balance or fall if you're tired. So what can we do to prevent getting to that point? Um, what can we do to really um, plan your day or plan your activity to keep you safe in the home or outside of the home. Um, other things that people have brought up to me over the course of doing lectures like this, um, motion detector lights are very affordable mm. now. You can get them in Home Depot um, or in Lowe's, anything along those lines. So maybe you don't even have to think of having a flashlight or turning on a light if you know that every time you walk in a certain area, a light's going to come on for you. So that works well. Um, I think most houses at this point have the uh, light switch at the top of the stairs and the bottom of the stairs, um, but making sure that that functions so you don't have to wait to turn on the light until you get to the bottom of the stairs. You want to be able to turn that on when you reach the top of the stairs to go down. Um, making sure that um, you have a functional lamp near your bed so you can turn it on if you do wake up or a night light um, in your bathroom or wherever you're going, if you get up in the middle of the night and it's dark. Um, and as I said that, you know, having some kind of a call system um, where you can call someone um, if you do get into trouble before it gets worse. Um, and then finally, I know um, I had a patient once and she had explained to me that in her complex, which was, you know, a, a lot of, actually there were older and younger people, but a lot of people who happened to be living alone they actually set up a call system very simply that they would call each other at night in a phone chain just to make sure that everyone was okay. Um, so it's kind of nice to knowing that, you know, at eight o'clock every night, someone's calling just to check on me, or I need to call someone to check on them. 
And it's not the onus of I'm getting older and someone has to check on me, but just kind of knowing that that check system is in place to give everyone peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, just a very, and these, when I tell you, there are so many versions of home safety <laughs> checklists on the internet. Um, I just went through and pulled together ones very quickly um, that I thought were very important as far as falls prevention. Um, obviously, making sure the cords that may be in your house are out of the flow of traffic. Um, you certainly don't want to be tripping on those if you can avoid it. Um, as Steve mentioned, small rugs and runners really need to be slip resistant. Um, are your floors even, especially in older homes like we have here in Rockland County, we have a lot of older, beautiful homes, um, but sometimes wood has settled or steps have settled and you may actually find that, you know, um, there's some uneven surfaces that you need to be aware of or people in your home need to be aware of. Um, uncluttering passageways. Um, are your floors unwaxed? Um, waxed floors are beautiful, but they certainly are more slippery. We talked about accessible light switches in a well-lit area, a readily accessible phone. Um, do you have emergency numbers posted where you would need them or someone else would need them if they came into your home to help you? Um, frequently needed items within reach, we talked about that. Is your toilet seat too low? Um, are you finding that it's difficult to get up off of your toilet safely? Um, you, you know, we have raised toilet seats, um, various grab bars that you can get. Again, Lowe's, um, Home Depot, all available um, to really look at keeping yourself as safe as possible. Bathrooms are a high fall area, really probably the least safe place of your house in your house as far as falling. Um, do you have non-skid mats and grab bars where you need them in your bathroom and shower? Um, frequently used chairs, are they high enough for ease of standing? You know, are you using a chair that has armrests that you can really push yourself up from? Um, outdoor walkways free from cracks and holes. Uh, we talked about handrails. Are they in good condition? Are they fastened securely? Um, and as I talked about earlier, are they long enough to span the entire staircase? Um, again, just some very quick things to walk through and think of in your own home. Any more questions or comments? We went through a lot of stuff very quickly. I apologize. No, that's that's great. You know, you got me thinking about a lot of things that I have to <laughs> fix at home, actually. I'm Absolutely. like, okay, yeah. I'm going to be paying a visit to Home Depot or Lowe's, as you said. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that this is all very important. I was just wondering, you know, yes, we all, always or usually think of the elderly and the risk for falling. But I mm -hmm. think that, you know, little kids Absolutely. tend to fall too, just because, mm -hmm. you know, of their mm -hmm. nature of being curious and moving around. And when you were talking about pets, for example, I know I have a, a little <laughs> pet and, you know, it's, it's a little jerky and she's always walking, you know, I literally it feels like she's walking uh -huh. in my legs, you know, like yes. within my feet and something. And, you know, so it's so many things that we don't think about that we live with That's every right. day. So I think that all these things that you brought to our attention mm -hmm. make us really aware of how we could so easily fall and we don't right. even notice. And I think, know? you know, again, so thank you for that. Of being proactive in, you know, looking at what could possibly present hazards for any age, not just an older population, mm -hmm. and doing something about them um, in our home, in our community, mm -hmm. and then looking at ourselves. What can we do for ourselves to make ourselves safer, whether it's shoes, whether it's an assistive device, whether it's getting into better shape? Um, you know, I, I, saw, um, I saw on the news the other day, they were saying they did a study, and during the pandemic, um, the average person gained, I think it was like two pounds a month you think this has gone on for 12 months. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think all of us um, can certainly get into better shape these days, mm -hmm. myself, certainly at the top of that list. Um, so really, you know, taking an account of where you are and where you want to be or how active you want to continue being as you age. Um, and that's really what, what we want to do. We want to age safely and prevent falls as, as a component of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Perna is saying, what can make a person fall on secured carpet floors 
even with rubber sole shoes. Um, what can make a person fall? Uh, I'm sorry, say it again. Mm -hmm. What can make a person fall on secured carpet floors, even with rubber sole shoes? Um, I, I think, you know, we talked about uh, predisposing factors. Are they weak? Um, all right, you know, I, I don't necessarily know if you can slip on a carpet. Um, rubber <laughs> but you can lose yeah. your balance regardless, yeah. right? Like if you're older or whatever mm -hmm. it is, uh, you can always lose There's your balance and there. still fall. Or, you know, something that I've noticed. Yeah. yeah, something that I've noticed in some places is that even though the carpets are, the carpets are secured sometimes towards the edges, there are little... Yeah, like, you know, like they're a little left up mm -hmm. or something. You you are kind of counting that the carpet is secure and then it right. isn't. And it's easy, easy to trip on the carpet. So right. I think it's, I mean, when you, that's what we call them accidents, right? That's right. We don't you don't, you don't see it coming and it happens. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, another one of our attendees, Eneas, he's bringing something very nice up and he, I guess he was looking us up and he says, Montefiore Nyack is doing really well in preventing falls. He has gotten the grade B as per hospital safety grade. And I think that it's important to mention too that in the mm -hmm. hospital, we also have, you know, a specific protocols that we follow to prevent falls, mm -hmm. patient falls. So we don't have a lot of time and I know that you could spend another hour probably just talking about that, but did you just wanna mention uh, something about this? Cause I think that it's important that people out in the community, they know that we're doing the best Absolutely. we can Absolutely. to prevent falls of our patients. Well, I've, I've had the, the honor of uh, being the co-chairperson of our falls committee here in the hospital for, I guess the last three years with one of our, our nursing directors from Med Surge. And I have to tell you, it's um, falls in the hospital. It's something we are all very, very concerned about um, because you're coming into a new environment. You may or may not you know, be on new medications. You're obviously here because you're sick, you're not feeling well. Um, so it really is the perfect storm when you're talking about coming into a hospital and being in a new environment and having the potential for falls. Um, put on top of that, maybe you're used to wearing a certain pair of shoes and now they give you a pair of hospital slippers and say, mm -hmm. good luck. Um, or you don't have your, your favorite cane from home or your walker from home and, you know, we're trying to give you one of ours here. Um, but certainly in the hospital, it's a major concern of ours. We are constantly looking at the environment, looking at lighting and really educating our patients from the time they come into the ER. Um, you know, we, we, have signs up all over fall, uh, a call, don't fall. So to really give us the opportunity to assist you uh, because we don't want you falling while you're here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we don't have a lot of carpeted surfaces. It's a hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as much as I'm talking about not having waxed floors, we have beautiful <laughs> floors. Um, so th there's really a lot that goes into, but we spend a lot of time as a team um, and when I say a team, our housekeepers, our physicians, um, everyone involved with trauma and the ER, we all sit and we talk about how can we prevent falls. And when we've had a patient who fall, we take a step back and say, how can we prevent this from happening to the next patient that comes in? Because it's heartbreaking. You know, it's the last thing we want to see is someone who's trusting us um, to allow this to happen to them here in the hospital. Right. And you know, you, you mentioned something that I think is part of daily living. And again, we don't think about it. It's like, for example, if we go to a hotel or something, we are used to the height of our bed. And I don't know if I'm the only dummy here, but it has happened to me that I'm going to get off my bed and I'm in a different bed. And if, you know, all of the sudden it's either too low or too oh, high absolutely. and I feel like I'm going to fall. Same thing with toilets. Mm -hmm. You know, you get used to the height of the toilet. Oh, the absolutely. House, and then you go somewhere else and you kind of fall hard, you know, yeah. and, same thing on chairs and everywhere. And Steve could probably attest to it. And I certainly see it from a physical therapy point of view. Um, as much as I love the holidays, I always dread the week after a holiday and any holiday, mm -hmm. because that's when we have people who are coming to spend time with family members in their home. 
and it's a new environment. And especially mm -hmm. if we take someone who's older and they're used to their environment and their toilet and their bed, and now, you know, they're in their daughter's home mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever home they're in, I don't mean to lay it on their daughter, but it's a different environment. Mm -hmm. And we do see an uptick in falls uh, because people are in a new environment around that time of year, or they're not used to their, their daughter's new puppy or, you know, the, the cat, I didn't know the cat was there, I tripped over it. So we really, I mean, that's a really big phenomenon as far mm -hmm. as falls. Um, so as great as it is for people to spend time <laughs> at the holidays, um, I always get a little bit nervous the week after because I know we're going to see that. Mm -hmm. um, and we should probably have a separate lecture on, you know, like how to, how to fall proof your home when you're having company. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my God, I would love that. Shoes and, and shoes and company. That's great. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to your house. <laughs> two, two more sessions to go, guys. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, well, last chance for questions. We only have like three minutes left. So thank that. you so much, <laughs> Steve and Tesh. This was very, absolutely not only to me, not only informational, but also entertaining. So Anytime. thank you so much. I feel really good to having you here. And um, I'm going to be inviting you, you know, at absolutely. least for two more of these presentations. <laughs> um, we're getting some congratulations here in our chat. They said great information, great oh, points, you. you know, uh, people are delighted. So thank you thank so you much. Thank everybody for coming. That's good. And to all of our attendees, thank you for being with us today. Don't forget next week, we are going to be talking about colon cancer prevention. March mm -hmm. is colon cancer prevention mm -hmm. month. So oh, we've been well. inviting everybody yeah, mm -hmm. to do your um, colon checkup. Make sure you are healthy, you are okay. And if something comes up, you know, prevention is key. The earlier you catch anything, you know, is going mm -hmm. to help you keep healthy. So thank you very much. I think we're done for thank today. You. And thank you to all of our attendees as well for supporting our Montefiore Naya community chats. Steve, Tish, love you. Thank you so thank much. You. you were great today. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.